Good morning. Hello, everybody. Um, my name, uh, you're probably wondering who I am. Uh, my name is David Gilbert. I am a native New Yorker, been living there most of my life. Um, back in my old life, I worked in the Garment Center, boring nine to five job. Uh, I started Wadjadai Games in 2006. Uh, was joined by my wife, Janet, 2009. Uh, my daughter, Eve, in 2013. And since 2006, we've launched about uh, 16 games, all those, uh, plus Unavowed, which we launched uh, last year. <clears throat> so this is the fifth, wow, that's blurry. Uh, this is the, <laughs> sorry, uh, this is the fifth year in a row that I'm giving the opening talk at this conference. And every year I'm amazed that they let me do this. Uh, this event's, event is very close to my heart, and I am so grateful for this opportunity every year. So thank you, Tom and Allie, and, and everyone else involved. Um, so one year ago, uh, I sat on the stage, I stood on the stage, and I gave a post-mortem talk about Unavowed, uh, which came out in August of last year. I spoke about all the lessons that I learned and the skills I picked up while making it, and um, I wondered uh, if I would be able to put those lessons into practice for whatever I ended up doing next. And I closed out with the words, um, I'll come back next year and tell you how it all went. Um, well, here I am, <laughs> and I wish I had some better news. Uh, professionally and creatively, it has been a bit of a roller coaster of a year. And I'm going to talk to you uh, about that. Um, my talks typically follow a kind of pattern. I have a specific message that I try to get across, a point of knowledge or a particular way of doing things. Uh, I spend maybe five minutes explaining what that is, and then I spend the rest of the talk basically talking about myself and pulling examples from my work and my career uh, that support and reinforce whatever point I'm trying to make. This year is gonna be a different, could be a little different. I'm not going to even pretend to try to have a point. This talk is purely going to be about me and my experiences over the last year. The more I progress in my career, I find that I'm inspired less by the words, here's how you do that. And I'm more inspired by the words, here's how I did this. Listening to personal stories and hearing about struggles and successes and failures are so much more useful than just telling me how I should be doing things. There's no right or wrong answer to anything. So basically, we can all go home. Uh, so two years ago, my business partner, uh, Ben Chandler, and I, uh, he's our main artist, uh, we were working on Unavowed. This was our 16th game made in this style. 2D, pixel, point and click, uh, this is what we usually do. And we were almost positive at the time that we had taken this type of thing as far as we possibly could. We had been doing this for a long time. And each game we released got harder and harder to sell. It was just getting hard to break through the noise. Uh, and every game like this that came out, ooh, thank you, that's very nice. Um, they, had, they seemed to have difficulty making a splash. So we decided um, after we finished this game, uh, we would try to do something new. And this line of thought was kind of spurred and uh, inspired by James Dearden, the developer of Techno Babylon, a game which came out in 2015. Uh, he wanted to do a sequel and asked us if we'd like to be involved again and help him make it and publish it. And of course I said yes, I friggin' love Techno Babylon. Um, but he wanted to do it in 3D using uh, Unity and Adventure Creator. And that was new and scary to me, but um, Ben himself was up for the challenge. At the time, he had finished most of the art for Unavowed, so um, he needed something to use up his time. Uh, so it was a good time for him to experiment and do some tests and uh, see if he could do it. And he decided that yes, he wanted to do it. So yay, we're going 3D. Um, we're making Techno Babylon in 3D, and maybe once we gain some skills in that, we can make a 3D game ourselves. Awesome. So this was something new and exciting. The 2D point-and-click adventure thing wasn't dead by any means, but I did feel that it had plateaued for us, 
and we had taken it as far as we could. And Unavowed would be hobbled by being that kind of game. So Unavowed comes out. It is our runaway bestseller by several country miles. It is a criti critical success. It is a financial success. It was nominated for all sorts of awards. It was an IGF nominee. Didn't win, but it was still awesome. F uh, folks from all over the world invited me to talk at their conferences, which was a, a pretty amazing thing. But of course, that left me with a bit of an um, existential crisis. This came up when I Googled existential crisis, so I just went with it. Uh, we had made all these plans to go in a, a new direction. So what do we do? Do we just ignore those feelings that we had? Were we wrong? Did we not plateau after all? Was this the new plateau? Um, or was unavowed merely an outlier? Uh, was this success just a one-off thing? We didn't know. So now I was kind of torn. Do we move this, the company in this, this new 3D shiny direction, or do we stay where we are? Fortunate thing was that I had some time to figure it out. Uh, Techno Babylon was being worked on by James, and we had another game in the works. Sorry, it's blurry again. Sorry. Um, uh, another game in the works called Nighthawks by Richard Cobbett, who I believe is here. There he is. Um, and the interesting thing about these two projects is that neither of them were being made in Adventure Game Studio. Almost every single game we developed or published was made in Adventure Game Studio, and neither of them was being made in that system. Uh, Nighthawks was being made with Unity and Ink. Thank you, John Ingold, if you're here. Um, and Techno Babylon was being made with Unity and Adventure Creator. Thank you, Chris Burton, if you are here. Um, and I didn't know anything about any of these systems. So for the first time in my career, I was publishing games where I had no idea how they were being made. So I guess that made me a real producer. No idea. <laughs> Sorry to producers out here. Um, uh, yeah. mm. But that was fine at the time because it left me free to try and figure out my next personal project and what direction to take it. 2D or 3D, again, so torn, I just didn't know. So for ages, I went back and forth. Every day, Ben and I spoke about the pros and cons. And finally, I made an executive decision. We were gaining all this new knowledge, and it would be such a shame to let it go to waste. We had been making a very similar type of game for a very long time, and regardless if we had plateaued or not, we were looking for a new challenge, a new hill to climb, uh, get out of our comfort zone. So while those two games were being worked on, I figured, well, I've got the time now. I, I'll take this time to really design my next thing and figure out what it's going to be. So, several months went by. <laughs> I think I've used this image like three or four years in a row. <laughs> it's my go-to image for basically, uh, I was never so blocked on my life. Um, a few Adventure X's ago, I talked about my frustration with how painstakingly slow my current project was going, uh, but this was way worse. I couldn't even decide what I wanted to write in the first place. Every day I would workshop ideas and reject them all, constantly, over and over again. Uh, it was extremely nerve-wracking and, and really killed my self-esteem. Uh, the term burden of expectation applied, and this sounds incredibly pretentious, and I was aware of that this was incredibly pretentious, but it didn't make it any less true that this game unavowed was our biggest breakout hit since Gemini Roo in 2011. So my thoughts were going, well, how do I top that? The expectations are so high, and if I don't meet or exceed them, then I'm done. It was a horrible way of thinking, and of course, it's not true. It was this negative feedback loop that just kept circling and circling, just this endless merry, endless merry around that I just couldn't get off of. So months went by, got to be December, still no progress. Um, but good things kept happening. You know, Unavowed made lots of top 10 lists, and that was awesome. Um, got to be February, March, still nothing, still no progress. I went to the IGF to present the game. I was being interviewed all the time, all the great things. Got to be April, May, still nothing, still completely stuck. I was asked to speak at all these events all over the world, um, and these are all amazing things, amazing honors, and, and the experiences were so wonderful. But the entire time, I'm just thinking, I don't deserve this. 
I'm washed up, I'm done, I just can't do this anymore. And I know it sounds ridiculous and kind of pathetic to have all these wonderful things, things happening and feel bad about it. But knowing that just added more to that feedback loop and making it worse. I needed to find a way out of this cycle before I drove myself completely crazy. Fortunately, uh, an off-ramp um, to this, uh, I guess you'd call it a roundabout, uh, presented itself in the form of the annual Adventure Jam, which is a two-week jam for adventure games. Uh, I was a judge a few years ago, so I was familiar with it and knew it was coming. And so I decided to enter and make a short game using these newfangled 3D skills that I had picked slowly up over the previous six months or so, just to make something, just to prove to myself that I could do this. And I did. I set up some basic ground rules for myself because I didn't want to give myself any major advantage over the other folks entering the jam. Uh, number one, I wasn't going to use my staff. That wouldn't be fair. Um, everything was going to be either created by me or purchased by me, meaning pre-made assets from the Unity store. Uh, number two, I gave myself a budget of 100 bucks. Uh, I figured that amount of money shouldn't be out of, the, out of the range of the majority of the folks entering. So I felt I'll, if I'm going to buy things, I will spend a maximum of $100. Number three, uh, if I was going to use voice actors, I would only use the actors who volunteered for the jam. I wasn't going to use any of my regular New York crew, uh, unless, of course, they volunteered. And number four, enter anonymously. I was hubristic enough to believe that my name attached to one of these jam games would give it a lot of extra attention that should rightfully go to the other entries. So I would enter the game under the name Solomon Gilerny. Uh Solomon, King David, King Solomon, obviously. Gilerny, you know, Bert and Ernie. <laughs> eh? <laughs> well, I thought it was hilarious myself. Anyway, um, I, I bought a city street pack and generated some assets using this cool tool I discovered called Uma. I nabbed this weird futuristic outfit, which I put on the character. I made her walk around, and it looked so funny that I, I made a joke that she was some kind of time traveler. So I decided to go with that. Uh, I made my jam game about a time traveler named Fia who comes from the future to look for a fugitive. You solve a couple of basic puzzles, you find the guy, confront him, game's over. So with this idea in mind, I very quickly put together a very simple design for a game that I called Old Skies. Uh, since I knew I only had two weeks to make this game, I didn't want to waste a lot of time on the design, uh, other the design stage, rather. So I forced myself to design the whole thing in one morning. Uh, since I was entering anonymously and was totally free of that burden of expectation, I didn't have to worry if it was good. And if it wasn't good, no one would know it was me. Uh, but in the end, I created something I'm, I'm quite happy with. Uh, I managed to incorporate a, a bunch of elements that I was never able to fully do in a 2D game, or at least never successfully. And unavowed, I tried to create um, this sense of walking around while your friends are talking to you. But I couldn't pull it off, because um, you were always looking at one static screen. You weren't walking around. Not really. But I was able to address that using this newfangled 3D technology. Um, so I did that. And I want to show you a, a bit of what I managed to do. Um, props to Sally Beaumont in the front row, who did the voice of Fia. Also, Edwin Tiong, who's not here. Um... Nozo, are you reading me? Loud and clear, Fia. What's your status? Got a splitting headache. Didn't the brass say this was a painless procedure? Time travel's a new science, Fia. Just be glad you're still in one piece. Um, you are still in one piece, right? All beds present and accounted for. Except plastic. My kit's gone. Oh, um, that's bad. Yes, Nozo, that's bad. My tracker, my multi-tool, even my weapon, gone. How do you expect me to find Monty without the tracker? This looked a lot brighter on my computer, apologies for that. Um, 
Now, it seemed like I'm showing off, <laughs> and I totally am. Uh, I knew this was just a small little game that I created in two weeks for a niche jam thing, but it was so important in my own esoteric creative journey. It helped me get through this awful negative feedback loop of self-pity and malaise. It got me through the worst case of writer's block I had ever experienced in my life, and it was super fun. I had the best time making this game. So I released it anonymously to the sound of crickets chirping. Uh, nobody was playing it, which I totally expected since I released it anonymously. Uh, and it was a little window into what it must be like to be a brand new developer in this modern marketplace. Um, but even still, it was, it was really hard because this game meant so much to me and I couldn't talk about it. And nobody else was talking about it, so I couldn't live vicariously through them. <laughs> this prideful part of me was just thinking, my work should transcend my brand. But, you know, <laughs> c'est la vie, I guess. Um, so uh, eventually the judging period ended, and I, I got to spill the beans so, and finally talk about it. And it felt really good. Um, it was even written about in PC Gamer, which was weird, but also kind of cool. And this experience was so transcendent for me that I, I spoke to Tom Cole and, uh, and said I thought it would make a neat topic for my next um, talk at Adventure X, so here I am. Um, and if the talk was given back then and the story ended here, that would be a wonderful positive note to end this talk on. Uh, but sadly, life doesn't always work out that way. Uh, a few weeks after this jam, uh, Techno Babylon too, sadly, and this is the first time I've ever talked about this officially, uh, had to be put on hold. I don't want to go into any major details. This is how we agreed to announce this. Um, the gist is, is that the developer, James Dearden, is going through some health issues at the moment and is taking time to deal with that. Um, he's working on the game whenever he can, but there is no timetable or really anything else I can say about it. I wish James all the best. We've become uh, very good friends while working together. So all I really want for him is to get better. Um, but suffice to say, uh, this left a, a big gap in our production schedule that we had to fill with something. Uh, so Ben and I talked and decided to take advantage of all our newfound skills and make a 3D game of our own. Um, Ben's duties on Techno Babylon 2 were primarily environmental art. Um, he didn't know much about creating characters, so I asked him to take a look at this system that I use for Old Skies called Uma, which is basically a real-time 3D poser. You can create a lot of characters on the fly. Uh, he said, okay, look at it, and we were off. And since we were starting rather late, I decided right away to take that little jam game I made, it, and, made and try to expand it into a full project. And it made the most sense because it tied in with this new 3D paradigm and also the UMA paradigm. Uh, the great thing about UMA is that you can change clothes and hair and, and things on the fly. And since it was a time travel story, uh, she would need to don various disguises uh, depending what era she was in. So that was the basic design framework for this new game. <laughs> in a couple of days, <laughs> uh, Ben created his own version of the base UMA model. And as you can see, I had a, a lot of fun playing around with it. I was so excited to get working. Um, I took his base characters uh, and I started prototyping, even though none of them had any clothes on. <laughs> um, and I really, I, I apologize. Um, I had updated this, but it doesn't seem to have worked. I had originally was gonna switch to another slide after this. It doesn't seem to be here, so you're gonna be looking at these guys for a little while, I apologize. <laughs> Um, so anyway, yeah, this was this is the honeymoon period. Uh, this is when it's fun. And just throwing up gray boxes and throwing in Uma characters and writing bits of dialogue and seeing if I could find the fun in this new design paradigm that I was in. And it was tremendous fun. It was so much fun. I, I just, you know, a lot of new things. And that lasted about two weeks. Um, slowly, over the next few months, that fun slowly began to change. All that fun became slow, agonizing work. Uh, the difference between making a little jam game with pre-bought assets versus making a fully viable commercial product from scratch were, duh, two very different things. And it wasn't long before we realized that we were both in way over our heads. We're only two people. We thought we had learned a lot over the last year, 
but it turned out we still only knew a fraction of what we needed to know. Uh, we did learn, but it was agonizingly slow. Uh, eventually, Ben got eyebrows onto our umas, so she's slightly more covered up than she was before. Um, and finally clothes, thank God. <laughs> Yay. Um, and then hair. Yay. Um, but all of this was a painstakingly slow process. And every step of the way, um, Ben, who's normally a, a very easygoing guy, his growing frustration was palpable, even over our, our Discord chat channel. And uh, I, I was going through a similar feeling. <laughs> uh, Unity just kept throwing errors at me. I did not understand. And every time I tried getting help or looked up solutions, the answers always involved new systems and new terms, new technologies that I would have to spend another day or two days or a week learning about. And none of it stayed in my head. It was very hard to learn. And you know, anyone, this is a common complaint, weird things just kept happening like this. Getting these characters to keep their damn clothes on was more of a challenge than I would expect. Uh, even, the, even the file size was astronomical. Um, this, this scene, which is made up of gray cubes, took up more hard drive space than it should have. So optimization was something I'd also have to learn eventually. Uh, and I knew that there was a learning curve for everything. And I was pretty confident we would both figure this out eventually, given time. Uh, but time was something that we had wasted a lot of already. It had been over a year since Unavowed came out, and we were still doing research and experimenting and learning. And all oh, that's great. But at the end of the day, we are business. And we have to, we eventually, we had to make that decision. Do we keep learning things, or do we start making things? And we finally confessed to each other that uh, this was not working out well. We needed to cut our losses because we were spending so much time learning stuff. And uh, it was agonizing because you know, we, had, we had spent so long on this and now we were giving up, or at least it felt like we were giving up. And that never feels good. It hurt our pride big time, uh, a lot, but I can't say we didn't try. That was six weeks ago. We returned to Adventure Game Studio we're going back to the tried and true 2D point and click thing, which will make a lot of our fans happy. Um, this is what this is why they like us, and I still love this stuff. Um, going back to the tried and true, etc. Uh, but what made things a little more frustrating was that my old skies design was so closely tied to being a 3D game that now it was basically useless. I couldn't use it. So now I was back to where I started, um, trying to come up with new ideas new designs, making up for the last, lost time we lost, back on that feedback loop, trying, to make not to ma trying not to make myself crazy. But having gone through all that, I find myself um, in a much better position now. Whenever I find myself on that negative feedback loop, uh, my brain telling me things like, um, you can't do this, you're washed up, you're done, I remember that jam game and what I managed to accomplish in just two weeks. And I think, no, I can, I can totally do this. Shut up, brain. And as much as I enjoyed working in Unity and taking things in this news direction and trying new things, there was something really great about just knowing how my tools work. Uh, and we're actually surprising ourselves often because the tricks and techniques and things we learned while working in 3D are helping us in our 2D work, somehow. Uh, how and why, um, there's a lot to get into. Maybe that'll be next year's talk. So in a year, I'll come back again, and I'll tell you how that went. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>